Here's how to quickly get up and running with the Mozzie sound library in Arduino, generating four sine waves for playback at the same time. The four sine waves I'm generating are going to be used to make call progress tones, which are the sounds you would hear in a plain old telephone service to give you a dial tone, busy signal, or when the other line is ringing. And those tones are made up of multiple frequency tones playing together. The Mozzie sound library is compatible with a lot of different Arduino compatible boards, including ESP8266. So I'm going to test it on this ESP8266 based board that I made recently with an audio output jack. And once everything is working, this is going to actually be used in a bigger project I'm working on to create a telephone landline central office simulator. We're not going through all the features of this Mozzie sound synthesis library. You can look on GitHub and I'll have links to documentation in the description. But here are some of the features. And the main thing I'm going to be doing is just setting up multiple oscillators to generate simple sine wave tones. And I'm going to take four of these running concurrently, combine them together and just get one final output audio signal. So just to get this up and running quickly, in the Mozzie documentation, it explains how all of these things work. I didn't really read through it. I just brute force went and looked at example sketches and just modified them until they did what I wanted, but I will link to this information. Using ESP8266, the audio output from this library is on GPIO2. And since I'm using this PCB, looking at the schematic, this uses the WeMOS D1 Mini with ESP8266 to take Wi-Fi commands and control a relay. But I also connected an audio output path on D4, which is GPIO2. And the audio out goes into this RC low pass filter. So with 1K and 10 nano, those values in a low pass filter have a cutoff frequency almost 16 kilohertz. So what that means is we can pass audio frequencies and start attenuating anything above what most people will probably be able to hear. So if there's any artifacts in the audio from digital synthesis, those can get filtered out and we just get our audio passing through. Then there's just a series capacitor to remove the DC offset and only pass the audio to this output jack. So I'm going to use this board. I'm not going to do any functionality with the rest of these features, just using Mozzie to generate four sine waves and use it as an audio test platform. And the audio I'm generating doesn't need to be high quality. I'm just going to use 8-bit audio. So looking through a quick start guide here, this is the basic structure of a sketch where you include the Mozzie library and initialize it in the setup. Then there's these two functions here and in the main loop you do your other tasks but then you call this audio hook function and that's where Mozzie goes in and updates the signals that it's generating on that output pin. So from here, in order to figure out how to get four sine waves playing audio simultaneously, I went and looked through examples, and in the basic examples there's a sine wave sketch, and here's where I saw a few extra things that need to be done to start a sine wave oscillator. So just because it was in this example, I'm using this sine wave data table with all of these samples that generate a sine wave when played back on a DAC. And we create an oscillator like this, referencing which data table we're using and that we're generating a sine wave. I wasn't too sure how to use this control rate, so I used that same number as well. And here with this created oscillator, we're calling it A sine. So here in the setup, we assign a frequency of 440 hertz to this sine wave oscillator, and the synthesized audio gets sent to the output pin using the update audio function. So in there behind the scenes, it's taking 8-bit mono audio from this sine wave generator and it ends up on the output pin. Anything that needs to occur to keep getting samples of the sine wave and putting them out on the audio pin all happen behind the scenes every time audio hook is called. 
in the main loop, and you do other sketch things if needed as well. So you just basically configure this and let it run. The upcoming project I'm working on with a plain old telephone service involves emulating this situation here where you have a telephone in one location, let's just say one neighborhood, another telephone that you want to call, let's say it's in a different neighborhood. Each neighborhood has a central office that controls what's happening with your phone, and when you request to make a call, it handles negotiating with the other neighborhood central office, and that will connect you with the target telephone at the other end. So along the way, trying to make a call, you'll hear the call progress tones in the receiver, which tell you what's going on as you're trying to make a call. So to make most of these sounds, we need to combine two different frequencies, and I'll do that with Mozzie playing two sine waves. But one of the call progress sounds involves four different audio frequencies being played together. If you leave the phone off of the hook too long, it'll start doing this really irritating sound to alert you and you can hang up the phone. And here's the ESP8266 sketch that I put together. So I noticed when I'm using one of these more recent ESP board files, the sample sketches were not compiling. So I found through research I had to include manually this header and then it compiled. Otherwise I'm doing very similar things to the example sine wave sketch that I looked up. And since I need up to four tones playing together, I just created four different oscillators called tone one through tone four. And then just some specific variables I'm using for timing within the sketch. And here's those two mozzie functions. I don't need to do any update control functions, but I do need to get audio out to the audio pin. So the example mozzie sketch just played back data samples from this one sine wave generator. And through looking at other project examples, I figured out if I want to play multiple sine waves together or whatever other audio signals, I just simply add them together and that's doing an audio mixing function. But the overall result still has to be an 8-bit audio data sample. So as you add these together, you get larger and larger calculation numbers, and we basically divide it to help scale it back down to 8 bits and get the summed audio sample that we're looking for. This took some playing around, but this is what it took to get four sine waves working together. And I have this audio on Boolean variable here, so it's going to be zero or one. And basically, if it's one and I multiply my audio signal by that, it basically means I get the original audio signal. So it plays as normal. But if I set audio on to zero or false, I'm multiplying whatever this data is by zero and getting zero, which means I'm muting my audio. So that's what I'm using this for here to turn audio on and off. Now in the setup, I initialize Mozzie and I set up my four sine wave oscillators with a frequency of zero hertz to start. And I just have this set up to play one call progress sound at a time. So I just have to uncomment one line at a time from here and from here to get whatever demo I'm trying to run. So the first step here is to configure the frequencies for all of these oscillators to get the call progress audio signal that I'm looking for. For example, to get the ringtone, I need to play 440 hertz and 480 hertz at the same time. So down in this function, configuring the ringtone, I set two oscillators for 440 and 480 hertz, and I don't need the other two, so I just set them to a frequency of zero hertz. Then in the main loop, I'm calling the ringtone function to go and generate the ringtone with those oscillators, and that's really it. And then, of course, Audio Hook lets Mozzie go and do what it needs to do to generate the tones. So looking at the ringtone function, in North America, the ringtone plays for two seconds, and then it has four seconds of silence, and then it starts over. And the pattern of on and off tones is the cadence. So I set up some variables in here. The first cadence is two seconds of on time, and another cadence variable is four seconds of silence. And because there's these two parts to the ringtone, audio and silence, I just have this cadence step 
number to count where we are in this pattern. So every time through the loop, this ring tone function is called, and based on where we are in our cadence pattern, if we're at the beginning where we're generating two seconds of the ring tone, all I'm really doing is making sure the audio output is not muted, so we've already configured the oscillators, and they're just going to be free running in the background, and for those first two seconds, the audio is enabled. So as the main loop keeps running, and Mozzie has its opportunity to do what it needs to do, audio is enabled, so we're just getting those two sine waves going out to the output. So we just keep calling the audio hook and the ring tone function, and eventually two seconds are going to pass. Because I set this cadence timer to be two seconds, and at the end of that function, when the two seconds pass, I increment what step of the whole pattern we are on. So we move up to the second pattern, which is four seconds of silence, and now that we're in that phase, I'm just making sure there's no audio enabled, so the main loop is still running and calling audio hook and calling ringtone. So after the two seconds, audio on is no longer true, so our output audio is basically muted, and we get four seconds of silence as we keep calling the ringtone function. And after this timer expires for cadence two, which is those four seconds of silence, we increase to the next cadence step, and that brings us here, and all we're doing is saying, okay, let's go back to zero, which is the beginning of this ring pattern, so the cadence timer goes to cadence one, which is two seconds of on time, so we just keep playing audio and muting audio, generating the ring tone. And the other tone generators are very similar, so if we comment out the ringtone stuff and uncomment the off hook stuff, just as an example, now for off hook, we configure all four oscillators with the required frequency to generate that overall tone, and every time through the main loop when we call the off hook function, well this one has a cadence of 0.1 seconds on and then 0.1 seconds off, and it just keeps repeating. So in this function, all we're doing is waiting for every 100 milliseconds to pass, and when it does, we just toggle whether the audio is enabled or not, and that will give us the off-hook pattern that we want. So this is one small part of the central office telephone simulator that I'm working on, and eventually I'll try using Mozzie for more advanced audio as well.